The Avocado 24 from Geek Vape. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Vapor Chronicles. Hello and welcome to the Vapor Chronicles. We are back and this time, well, this time we got a little something from Geek Bait. This is the Avocado 24. Everybody's been anticipating this, hoping that it delivers. I've had my hands on this thing for over a week now and I have struggled to film this review. Lots of re-edits, lots of frustration, but it's finally finished and I nailed the build it, it was troubling to me because it wasn't performing the way that I knew it should. And it's all about me, okay? I've had hundreds of RTAs. I've wicked and built and reviewed hundreds, if not thousands, of products at this point. And each one of them presents its own unique challenge, which is part of the joy I like to tinker. And, and this one was no different because I was struggling for days. I've had this for like over a week now. And I was struggling to get a build in here and a setup in here that delivered that wow effect that I thought this should be able to achieve. It all came down to wicking. Doesn't it always? Wicking is critical. If you're struggling with flavor and vapor production and, and you're getting a non-flavorful or uh, muted uh, vape out of a device, m most times it's about wicking. This time I've nailed the wicking and less is more. And that's the case with all of these Genesis bottom feeding style tanks, all right? I have so much to show you, so much to fill you in on about the Geek Vape Avocado 24. It's time, so let's take a closer look. Let's dive in and break it down. All right, so pretty standard Geek Vape packaging. I'm not going to really go into too much detail about it. This is the black version. It also comes in stainless steel. So if we take this out, and in your kit you get some extra O-rings, you get these orangish red colored ones it looks like you get some black o-rings for the actual tank section and some of these blue ones are seafoam blue or cyan or I don't know but you get them you also get some extra post screws and your 510 drip tip adapter you also get two glass tanks you get a clear see-through one and you also get this uh, smoked or frosted glass not smoked it's more frosted you get your spacer for single coil And that just had an o-ring fall off but you have these little o-rings that seat in there and you also get your metallic drip tip standard 510 and this one is removable this is your wide bore and that just unscrews like so give you your little tool here which i like these I think I'm going to go with the frosted, but they do give you an extra one of these, which is nice. So I think that's pretty much it. Scratch and check for authenticity. You always want to make sure that what you're using is authentic. And it looks like they gave me an extra one of these because there's actually one in there already. So that's kind of cool. Let's give you a little bit of specs. You have the 10 millimeters for the drip tip or the wide bore drip tip. The device itself is 33 millimeters high. 24 millimeters in diameter. It holds five milliliters of juice capacity, which is really nice for this Genesis style. It's not really a Genesis atomizer. You do have adjustable airflow. If you look here, you have one hole and one hole. These are sort of the Cyclops styles. And when you spin this, you have a bigger hole. This is your widest setting. And you can even adjust that to any size, really, when you spin it. And you also have this smaller hole and then you go back to the bigger. So you have lots of options when it comes to that. On the bottom, if we zoom in, they are individually serialized and you can see there's some information about Geek Vape, manufactured and designed. It does have an adjustable positive uh, pin. It is gold plated. This block that they have for single coil builds is made out of ceramic, so it's a ceramic block. And you can see it has a little tube here for giving you airflow directly through from the one side if you're going to do a single coil build. All right, so this does come off if you just pull, and there's your build deck. 
There's your two wicking channels. You have velocity style posts, which we've all become familiar with at this point. These grub screws are made out of 316 stainless steel. Uh, they have a hardness rating of 5558 HRC by 1200 degrees Celsius nitrogen surface treatment. The peak insulator for the positive post over there is a raw material that's made in the USA for the peak insulator. So if you open up your post screws, we're going to take this out and we're going to do a dual coil build. Yeah, and that disconnects your positive post just like that. There you go. So once that's unscrewed, this should just fall right out, which it does. And then this should just unscrew, which it does. And this is how you change out your glass section. So the chimney detaches, and there you go. Okay. Screw that back on. Now, after I put this post back on, there's your peak insulator, by the way. That does come out. Pop that back in. Pop your positive post back in. Make sure you get this all snug life. The nice thing about having it this way is that this 510 is adjustable and it still makes good contact even if you loosen it up or tighten it. So that's good. Post is stable. Everything's good. Now this is probably my biggest thing that I'm excited about for this. A lot of times you can see that this is the, the build deck sort of offset. It's not completely centered. This post is sort of moved over and everything sort of moved over. And normally you would fill, like in the last one, you'd fill through one of the holes. You'd have to sort of, if you wanted to do dual coils, you'd have to like jam your syringe in there. It was a big fat pain in the you-know-what. Now you have this hinge right here. So they call it a hinge lock filling system. And the reason why it locks is that once you put the, the top on, it actually holds this in place. But this is on a hinge, right? And it feels pretty stable. It does move a little bit, but, you know, it covers it pretty well. And then you have this little rubber seal or gasket right there that keeps it from leaking and that's where you're going to fill from right so if you have a, like a dripper bottle or something like that you can sort of just drip right in there and um, but let's do a build let's do a simple build we're going to put this on the volcano lava box just for testing purposes i think it should match up pretty nice on there so let's screw that down 24 millimeters yeah fits on there real nice a little tiny 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 bit of overhang but it should be no problem Okay, say you want to do a single coil build. Well, the first thing you want to do is tighten up your grub screws on the, the two post holes that you're not going to use. In my case, I opened this and this because they're the ones I'm using, and I closed off this and this because they're the ones I'm not going to use. Then I'm going to take my 3 millimeter Clapton wire, which I'm, this is what I'm going to use, and I think I have uh, seven wraps, 3 millimeter bit. I that should work perfectly fine for this. Then you can put your little spacer in, your little ceramic spacer, and that's going to allow the uh, airflow from the other side to sort of shoot on through. Now I have found that you sort of have to put even pressure and sort of rock this a little bit and uh, get a little bit of um, juice onto these O-rings. For some reason it just doesn't, it doesn't want to go in there without some work. Once you sort of get it in there it's good but it doesn't go in perfectly at first. You sort of have to work it but you want to make sure that it's flush with the top here and everything is flat and it's not wobbly because you want to go straight on through. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that I notice is that when you put the airflow cover on here, when you put the uh, top cap on, it's not a complete seal here. Like when I put this on, there's a gap. So the air not only goes through the middle there, but it also goes 
around the sides and it hits it on the other side too. All right, so let's straighten this coil. So the coil's placed, we're ready to wick. We're gonna keep this nice and fluffy, nice and fluffy, not too tight. So we're gonna send this through. You don't, want it, you don't want it to be sloppy, but you definitely don't want it to be too tight. So it's nice, little resistance. Nice and fluffy. You can comb your wick a little bit. And we're gonna snip our cotton about right here, right about there. All right, so I'm leaving enough space on the side of the coils to let air escape. I'm not forcing it in there, I'm not locking it in. It's loose, it's fluffy. I can move it up and down if I need to a little bit, but it should be perfect. The airflow opening is hitting the coil directly. And I'm gonna space this a little bit more out, just about right there. So we're gonna drip some of this goof e-juice straw some sauce so that should be nice and saturated I also want to see how much liquid this thing holds um, they say it's five mils we're gonna see so I'm gonna fill up this syringe with five milliliters five mils of juice and if you notice that this little hinge is getting a little bit um, loose on you and it's not sealing as tight, there's a little latch right here you just pull. But you can actually carefully bend this a little bit down by putting a little bit of pressure evenly, not too much, and it'll make it more snug on this little gasket right here. All right, so let's fill this tank up and see how much it holds. Okay, so I'm gonna say it holds four milliliters of liquid. I still have a milliliter left, that was five. So I'm saying four. Okay, then we're gonna take our airflow control and I'm gonna leave mine nice and open. And we're gonna center it right over the one coil on the one side and the airflow opening on the other side. All right, so there we go. So it should be not leaking at all. Everything should be lined up. Airflow is wide open. Airflow is wide open on this side. We can adjust it a little bit. So you can see right through to the coil. And we're good, we're good to go. So let's uh, zoom back out and give this bad boy a vape. There you go, the up close. Okay. Anybody that's friends with me, that's hung out with me for the past week, they've known that I've been bothered by trying to nail the best setup in this Avocado 24 to give me the best vaping experience. Currently, I have a single coil clapped in, I think it's like seven wraps, three millimeter. The wicking is set up so that when I vape on this, this is a DNA 40 from Lost Vape, so that when I tilt the tank in single coil mode, the coil's on this side, it's wicked right at the top, and then when I tilt it, and fire, it feeds the coils, the e-juice, e and the Clapton coil sucks the juice up the wicks. I followed all the recommendations for everyone that I've consulted, and I've consulted a lot of people. I personally am more of a higher wattage, more vapor production, uh, I think because of my need for nicotine. A lot of the sub-ohm tanks, a lot of the RTAs that have come out recently, man, you can vape them at like, you know, 70, 80, 100, 150, 200, even 300 watts. And when you vape three milligrams of nicotine and you're vaping 
that much juice. You, your addiction, I'm going to call it that because that's what it is, sort of uh, requires that you get that much vapor. Something like this in single coil mode at 40 watts, which is what I have it at, doesn't deliver for me personally, the way I vape. Doesn't mean it doesn't deliver for the person that's like, you know, a flavor chaser or somebody that you know, is satisfied with this amount of vapor production and this amount of performance. It changes though when you put dual coils in this. And that's the cool thing about the Avocado 24 is that it's really flexible. Now granted, there's a learning curve with everything and having something for a week, you can't experiment with every possible build, you know, every possible way to position your coils, every type of coil wire material, uh, different wick types, different wicking you know, uh, procedures of how you're going to put your wick in there. There's so much that this is you know, one of those things that you're going to get better with over time and your experience is going to improve. I have not nailed this thing to the point where I can say that this is the best tank I've ever vaped for me. Is it the best style of this type so far? Yup. If you're into Genesis style atomizers, this is the best one that I vaped of this style yet. It's the most flexible, most juice capacity, easiest to build on, easiest to refill. It nails all those things and it's pretty good quality. Is it something I would pick up daily and be my all day vape? No way. So I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna put in a dual coil build and I did both in the up close. And then I'm gonna take it for a vape more my style. And we're gonna see how it performs, how the flavor is, how the airflow is. And I'll give you my final impressions of the Geek Vape Avocado 24. Okay, we're back. Um, I ended up trying something different for this dual coil build. And I've had Fuse Clapton's, Clapton's Stainless Steel. I've had everything you could imagine in dual coil and single coil. And for the style of vaping that this is designed for, this build, which is regular Canthal, 26 gauge, 5 wrap, 2.5 millimeter, it ends up ohming out to about 0.3 ohms. Um, it's the most successful I've had. Now, I think that I'm just starting to really nail the wicking, and less is more when you wick this, okay? So I use Ude cotton pads, and what I did was, you know, I cut my little slivers and I peeled, I peeled a layer off the one side, layer off the other side, and sort of fluffed it, and then just fed it through so it's just a little bit snug, but don't overstuff it and don't, don't stuff your cotton in those holes for wicking because it's going to wick much better when you don't do that, all right? So I think it's just a wicking thing and I'm improving as time goes on, but I can tell you this, that with dual coil right now at 50 watts, 0.3 ohms, it's a flavor fucking machine. It is flavor for days. Let me take a vape. Excellent flavor, and it's wicking consistently. Okay, so let me just sit back. I'm gonna fast forward through some of this. Uh, I'm just gonna chain vape this and drain the tank, and just have a relaxing Sunday afternoon vape. So as you can see, I mean, it's producing great vapor production, but the thing is, is that the flavor is just absolutely awesome. It's very good. I have a juice in here that I'm familiar with. I got some Hit That Juice, Bananagasm, and it just tastes wonderful. It tastes just like it does when I'm using an RDA. It's wicking no problem. As long as you tilt your tank, and with dual coils, it's sort of a little bit more challenging uh, if you don't put your wicking too far into the tank, which I've made mistakes before doing. We all know that now. Thank you. But it really is a wonderful vape. Juice drains quickly because it's just pulling the juice up, pulling the juice up, pulling the juice up. And I like to keep this thing topped off because of the way this thing wicks, okay? I think if I put Clapton's back in this and wick it the same way, it's gonna get even better. Stainless steel fuse Clapton's when I vape them, they're just wonderful. Uh, Dear Addy sent me some and they're just bomb. I can't wait. I'm going to, I'm going to put them back in here again because I had them in before, but I just didn't wick it right. So if you're not getting good flavor, if it's not wicking fast enough, if you're not getting that wet flavorful 
you know, like when you when you when you vape, it's not a spitback flavor. It's just vapor flavor. You need to rewick it. Wicking is key with this, with any kind of Genesis style, and this one is it's even more important. Let me turn the power up a little bit and see if I can get even more vapor production without getting dry. When I start getting dry, I'll let you know. Wow. Even more flavor. It's better. Let's go up to 60, 61 watts. Oh my, some of the best flavor I've gotten from any tank to this date. When you, when you nail your build, and I want you to experiment, you're going to get a sensational, flavorful, cloudy, flexible vape from the Avocado 24. Now, I've been able to use dripper bottles into these holes. They're big enough to support them, which is cool. Fill it up. Close off your little hinge and pop your cap back on and it's simple to do simple to fill and you're back to vaping like a champ if you notice some inconsistencies in this i filmed so much footage and i had to chop it up i had to edit this thing a lot to make it represent my final opinions and feelings about this so if you notice i'm dripping a different juice it was filmed over a couple different days and i'm going to try to chop it up to make it express my final opinions about the geek vape avocado 24. So let's take this for a vape. 65 watts, 0.32 ohms. It's just cloudy. It's flavorful. It's a wonderful vape. This is the first Genesis style that I've actually felt confident to leave the house with. There's no leaking, it's easy to fill, and it holds about four mils of juice. They said five, I think, but four milliliters is what I'm getting when I fill it up. Chain vaping is not a problem. So I think it has really good looks. The build quality is very good for the price. Um, Easy to fill, two different glass sections, frosted, non-frosted, dual coil, single coil, big build deck to build on, velocity style posts, adjustable drip tip so you can go wide or you can put your standard 510 with the adapter, at an affordable price point that delivers. So Geek Vape, once again, has delivered the goods for vapors out there. I hope you all enjoy this avocado because it is a significant improvement over the original avocado. Just make sure that the device you're gonna put this on will fit properly a 24 millimeter diameter and you should be on your way to some pleasurable vaping. Uh, I'll have links below if you're interested. This was sent to me for free for the purpose of this review from GeekVape and Everson.com. So I'll have links below. It should be available hopefully soon. GeekVape has, you know, had a lot of trouble getting stuff out quickly. So I hope they deliver this fast and with high quality that you deserve for your money. And um, that's pretty much it. So if you like my channel, if you like my content, please click the subscribe button below. You can also find me every single Thursday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, on the Vape Team channel on YouTube. I do a live show with Mike Vapes, Vaping Fagan, and myself every single Thursday. All things vapes, cloudy entertainment. Please join us. You can also find me on all my social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and I have a private group on Facebook called the Vape Team Facebook group. You can ask to join that. We do giveaways. There's so many experienced community members that's growing every single day. If you need help building, if you have questions, they'd love to help you. I'd love to help you. So we all hang out there. I also do first looks and behind the scenes stuff, opinions and things like that. A lot more where this came from. I'll see you soon on the Vapor Chronicles. Have a good one.